What happens when you combine a ruggedized hard drive with a priest and automatic weapons? We'll find out next on Before You Buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This This is Twit. Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. And this is all that's left of the ruggedized hard drive. We'll talk to Father Robert Balliser, host of This Week in Enterprise Tech, about what he did to test a ruggedized hard drive. This man goes to every length possible. But first, let's say hello to the producer of our show, Nicole Lee. Good to have you here, Nicole. Hello. We got the whole group here. You might as well show everybody. We've got Tony Wang going to do a review, Robert, Nicole. Uh, you're going to start us off with a keyboard case. Yeah, so this is the in-case origami workstation, according to the in-case closet. And it's a case for a keyboard, which sounds strange um, until you see it work with an iPad. Then it sort of all clicks together. Let's take a look. I'm Nicole Lee from Twit, and before you buy, and I'm reviewing the in-case origami workstation. Now, you may be thinking, what the heck is this thing? And this is actually a case for the Apple wireless keyboard. So you just set it into these grooves right here, sort of fits nicely into the battery compartment of the Apple wireless keyboard. Just close it up with, the, with these uh, Velcro um, attachments. And it's sort of, it's a nice little um, carrying case for the Apple wireless keyboard. But that's not the primary reason to get the Origami workstation. As its name suggests, it's designed to work with the iPad. So it's called a workstation in that sense. So I have an iPad right here. I've already paired the Apple wireless keyboard to the iPad. So what I have to do is just um, fold the case back. There are these sort of indentations right here. You can just attach the Velcro things on the back into like a nice triangle type shape. And you can just um, prop up the iPad with your Apple wireless keyboard. And you can use it as a kind of a mini computer in a way, like a mini portable workstation in a sense. Now, we've reviewed similar solutions before, like the Logitech Ultra Thin Keyboard and the Logitech uh, Solar, uh, the, the Solar Keyboard Folio. Um, those are actual cases. Those actually, you know, sort of work with your iPad together in a, in a, in a single solution. But some people, including myself, prefer the Apple wireless keyboard just because it's a nice big keyboard, full-size keys, uh, really great for typing, especially if you're writing long documents, writing long articles for your work or your um, school projects. And I just think the Apple wireless keyboard is the way to go. Now, there's a price issue. Uh, The Apple wireless keyboard does not come with the case, of course. You have to buy this separately, and that's around $70 or so. The case itself is around uh, thirty dollars or so. So the price is definitely an issue. But as you can see here, it's a very nice, compact, very sturdy form factor. I even use this without the keyboard. It's like a simple iPad stand. Um, so you know, I think it's well worth it. Now for the uh, pros and cons of the uh, in-case origami workstation. As I said, the pros. It's a very compact form factor. You can use it as a uh, case for your Apple wireless keyboard. You can also use it as an iPad stand. Uh, you can sort of fold this in and out. It's very flexible in that way. The con, as I said before, the price. It doesn't come with the keyboard. You have to supply your own keyboard. And it's around $30 with, for just a simple little case like this. A little bit pricey, I think. But like I said before, um, I think it's well worth it. I definitely, say, I definitely say it's a buy just because if you really miss that full keyboard feel, um, you really can't go wrong with the Apple wireless keyboard, and it goes really well with this particular case. Um, my name is Nicole Lee, and this has been my review of the Incase Origami Workstation. Nicole, I use the uh, Logitech that we reviewed earlier, mm-hmm. the, the ultra-thin PC or uh, iPad uh, cover mm-hmm. case. And it's nice to carry, but you're right, the, the Bluetooth keyboard from Apple is a nicer keyboard. I think that your solution works if you want very simple typing. Yeah. If you're writing like, a, like an actual like full-on article, full-on documents for your work or for your school work per se. I think having a really full keyboard is actually... And, and a lot of people may already have that Bluetooth yeah. keyboard for use with a, a Mac. Yeah. So if you're going to go portable and you just want to carry your iPad, that's a good yeah. a good choice. What's it made out of? It's kind of like um, like, a, like a silicone sort of feel. So it's waterproof? Yeah. And, yeah. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. 
Very good. good. Nicole Lee produces the show. She's got a fuel band on. I just ordered mine. You like that Nike fuel band I mini do review? Like it. You do. I do like it. And it, 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 it encourages you to exercise and you, you keep think, track. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Be, it, be, because you can share with your friends, it, it sort of encourages friendly competition. See, I have the up band. Mine didn't break. I was the only guy <laughs> who had one that didn't break. It never broke. But it, it didn't have a lot of social uh, yeah. capabilities. I'm sure they'll add some. I thought the fuel band, even though it's a little bit bigger, might be more useful. So mine should come any day now. Yeah. Then I can share my fuel points with you, I guess. Sure. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Nicole. Let's right. say hello to Tony Wang. Tony is one of our premier editors. I'll hand you the microphone. Uh, Tony, <laughs> you got stuck with uh, the Pantech. Uh, what is it called? The the Renew. The Renew, because yeah. it's 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 uh, recyclable. Yeah. It's a phone. It's a phone. That's recyclable. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like they recycled the Sidekick. Actually, yeah. let's let's take a look at your review. Tony from Tuna TV, and before you buy, today I'm reviewing the AT&T Pentec Renew. It's AT&T's latest offering in feature phones. So here's the Pentec Renew. Uh, it comes in a recycled looking box from AT&T. This is the AT&T offering only, so it is very well branded AT&T. You know this is the AT&T phone. Specs of the phone. The 3.2 inch capacitive touchscreen with a full slide out QWERTY keyboard. And on the back, you have a 3 megapixel camera. Kind of looks like Android. It is not Android. Do not be mistaken. This is not Android. This phone is running a single core Qualcomm chipset. You can see you have 3G, but no 4G. And obviously no 4G LTE. The phone is very simple. AT&T actually calls these phones quick messaging phones. And really, that's what they're made for. Um, it's really made for texting. The keys are relatively responsive for texting um, if you don't have very big hands. So I, I gave this to uh, Jason Hall, and he couldn't text with this. It's too small. And you can see uh, it comes preloaded with these quote-unquote apps, but they're actually just web apps. They take you to the mobile version of all the websites. So you get mobile version of Facebook. You get mobile versions of Twitter. And you also get a bunch of webmail. And it's really, it feels very like 2004. Uh, it feels like I'm still using GPRS and I'm using a proprietary web browser for the phone. The camera is 3 megapixel, nothing too spectacular. Really not a, not a very good camera at all. I mean, it's relatively fast, but it's fixed focused, so don't expect any good pictures from it. The build quality is really good. Um, for those of you who don't know, Pentec is actually a Korean brand, and they're sort of like an OEM, just like uh, HTC used to be. Pros and cons. Uh, the phone is very well built. Um, it feels very solid. There's no play in the sliding mechanism. Uh, keyboard it's pretty good, pretty good tactile feedback. Con of this device, the con would be to pay $70 a month for unlimited texting and 3G data for this phone. It's ridiculously expensive and you're much better off just paying a little bit more and get a real smartphone. Buy, try, or don't buy, it's going to be a don't buy from me. Um, not because of the device itself, it's very well made, but because of the service fee you have to pay with AT&T to use this device every month. Tony for Turtle TV, and this is the Pentec Renew. Thank you, Tony. You know, I have to say, it feels like they're trying to trick people into thinking they're buying an Android phone. Right, it's not. I mean, it looks like it's Android if you're looking through the menu and you can add widgets to the homepage, but... It's even got a dock bar. It's got the Android-style capacitive buttons at the bottom. But it's just, it's not an Android phone. Right, I mean, you can go to the AT&T store and, you know, I mean, their own... App Store and download right. their apps. But Which are all bookmarks. Yeah. <laughs> so. It does feel well made. Yeah. Um, I think the real point is if they're selling this as an inexpensive phone right. because it's only, what, you said $75? Yeah, $70. That you're still paying $70 every month. For two years. For two years. So it's it's it, you're not really saving that much money. No, you're not. I mean, it's you the can, monthly fee. You can get their pay-as-you-go go plan from AT&T for less than that. And get and a no Galaxy contract. S3 or right, something or good. Even the original S is fine. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This. Yeah, I like it. I like your line. This is a good. Would be a good phone in two thousand four. Exactly. The Pantech yeah. Renew. 
at least you can recycle it easily. Yeah. Why don't we do that right now? <laughs> Thank you, Tony Wang. By the way, the full versions of all of our reviews are available on our YouTube site, Twit. Uh, YouTube site is youtube.com slash twit. Got to get in the right order. YouTube.com slash twit. Full version of this show is, of course, always available on our site, twit.tv slash BYB. And you can email Nicole and let her know what you'd like to see a review of next uh, at BYB at twit.tv. I got to say, you are rapidly becoming my favorite priest. Robert Balliser is back. Father Robert. You sh you wait a minute. You went to a gun range to shoot this up? Yes, we did. <laughs> I mean, how can you truly test a hard drive unless you shoot it, right? They're not billing this as a a gunproof hard drive. No, no, it's just a rugged hard drive. <laughs> Let's take a look. I'm Father Robert Balasser, the digital Jesuit, the host of Twiet, this week in Enterprise Tech on the Twit Network. I'm taking a look at the IOSafe rugged portable. IOSafe is known for making comically sturdy storage products. They've earned this reputation by setting their enclosures on fire, dropping them from great heights, crushing them under tractors, throwing them into swimming pools, and using them for target practice, all without losing a single byte of data. The Rugged Portable takes IOSafe's disaster-resistant philosophy and packs it into a USB 3.0 device that is enclosed in solid aluminum or titanium and measures one inch deep, four inches wide, and five and three quarter inches long, just under a pound heavy. The rugged portable speed was about what you might expect from a mixed mode drive. In our test using a USB 2.0 connection, the rugged portable was able to maintain consistent write speeds of 27.8 megabytes per second and read speeds of 33. In USB 3.0 mode, the rugged portable scored 82.9 megabytes per second for writing and 106.2 in reading. These scores place the rugged portable in about the middle of the pack for external drives. However, it's the drive's disaster bona fides that make it a standout. The aluminum version of the drive can withstand crush forces of up to 2,500 pounds, while the titanium version can withstand up to 5,000. The sealing system used by IOSafe is guaranteed to survive a salt or freshwater bath up to 30 feet deep for 72 hours, while also protecting against full immersion in diesel, oil, hydraulic fluid, or other caustic chemicals. The 3.5 inch drive contained within the enclosure is suspended, isolated from all axes of motion, meaning that the drive is designed to withstand a 20 foot drop without transferring excessive g-forces to the drive. What all this means is that the rugged portable is hard to kill. We've taken turns shooting at it with a shotgun, smashing it to the floor, and shooting bolts of lightning into the drive. We've cooked it, dunked it, crushed it, and given it the full Roadrunner Acme cookout treatment. No matter what we did to it, we were always able to pull our data off the drive. Of course, IOSafe's disaster-resistant philosophy goes beyond simply having an armored enclosure. The main selling point of IOSafe's entire line of storage devices is their drive recovery service. If for any reason you lose data, IOSafe will spend from $2,500 to $5,000, depending on which drive you purchase, to get your data back. No questions asked. The rugged portable that we reviewed is available now in capacities of 500 gigabytes for about $180 and one terabyte for less than $300. One year of protection comes standard with the purchase of the drive, but you can extend the protection to three and five years with an additional fee. I want to start with the cons because there are two that are readily apparent. The first is size and weight. This is a big drive. I mean, you could smack someone over the head with it and, uh, well, the drive inside wouldn't feel a thing because it's armored, but you expect that from an armored drive. The second con is not so easy to explain away, and that is price. This is an extraordinarily expensive drive, $180 to $300 for 500 gigabytes to one terabyte. Compared to similarly sized drives, that's three to four times more per gigabyte than uh, well, what you could buy from Western Digital or Seagate. Now on the pro side, you have to consider what that money is buying because you're not really buying a drive. I mean, this is a great drive. It's, it's very much rugged. It's, it's cool how much punishment you can put it through and have it survive. 
but you're not buying the drive, you're not buying the storage, what you're buying really is the DRS, the drive recovery service, the, the peace of mind of knowing your drive is safe, your data is safe. If the drive fails, they'll get your data back. If you drop it out of a car, they'll get your data back. If you drop it out of a plane, they'll get your data back. If you do something to the drive, you accidentally delete your data and you desperately need it back, I will say full payout, one time, no questions asked, $2,500 to $5,000 of their own money to get your data back. You're really buying an insurance policy for your data. And uh, well, how can you put a price on peace of mind? So the question, buy, try, or don't buy? I think this definitely has to be a try. And, and here's my reasoning. If you need something like this, if you have data that absolutely must be protected at all times, and it makes sense. In fact, this is a drop in the bucket on uh, uh, well, how much you should spend on your data integrity. But if you're just looking for an enclosure, if you just like having an indestructible hard drive, this is probably not the device for you. I'm Father Robert Ballas here from Twyet, and this has been Before You Buy. You actually, you actually literally, you did shoot it. We did shoot it. This, so it was a, you were using a shotgun and we, a 223 on we this? We started with a shotgun and the shotguns were just... It they bounced off. It, right. Yeah. So then we upped it to a 223. And uh, you can see, actually, where, where, the, the, where the shot went through. My brother's a much better shot. I had the corner shot, so it ripped through the side. R you did that, and Ryan did the two in the middle? He, yeah, he did the now, same as. Now, did it hit the Seagate? It actually hit, uh, one of them hit the corner of the Seagate, but the Seagate was still working when still we pulled worked. it out. But as you say, you're not really paying uh, for the integrity. This is the aluminum one. I presume right. the titanium would be even oh, a little the, tougher. The titanium one we wouldn't be able to get through. Yeah, but you're really paying for the insurance. Right. And it's and it's what? It's about 100 150 bucks more than the same kind of external drive would be. Right, yeah. So you're, you're paying a premium. That's, right. that's definite. You're paying about 100 to 150 depending on the capacity and the type of interface. But you're paying for the insurance. Right. That's what you're really buying. Right. This is a USB 3, and it looks like eSATA as well, or no, just USB well, 3. They have a USB 3 version, and then they have a Thunderbolt version ah, that's coming out in just a bit. That'd be that'd be cool to have. Very, very, very nice. So the full review, this you did this for This Week in Enterprise Tech, will that's be great. on This Week in Enterprise Tech, the Labor Day edition of the Twyet. The Labor Day edition. You do Twyet uh, every Monday at, at noon? At noon, yes. Okay. 3 p.m. Pacific time on twit.tv if you want to watch live. And you can also download uh, copies of the show at twit.tv slash T-W-I-E-T this week in Enterprise Tech. Wow. You're the first. That was your gunpowder, too? That was my gunpowder, yes. Well, I don't even want to know. It's a necessary thing. Every priest has gunpowder. Really? Yeah, it's, it's, it's required by the Vatican. I think we've all learned something here today. So uh, there you go. It's a try. I'd say a buy if you need a rugged uh, drive. Yes. That's a pretty amazing uh, thing. Uh, a, a buy from uh, Nicole uh, for her uh, keyboard case and a don't buy from Tony Wang on the Pantec Renew. Thank you, all three of you. Now, I was supposed to review, the, I'm very excited about this, the Asus, uh, trans, uh, is it the Zen book? It's their new uh, ultra book, which they say is inspired by Intel. It should really say inspired by Intel from a uh, after a device invented by Apple, but we're not. <laughs> we'll talk about. This. But the only problem with it was uh, the power supply didn't work. So we just got a new one, and I will review it next week. I won't next be able to review it this week. I wanted to give it a little bit more time, but so far though, impressed. But I only had an hour and a half before the battery died. So <laughs> I'll plug it in, and we'll find out. If you want to see more, as I said, you can go to our YouTube channel, which is uh, YouTube.com/slash/twit, or watch the show itself. Uh, after the fact, we have on-demand audio and video available at twit.tv slash BYB. I'm Leo Laporte. Thank you for being here. Remember, you got to watch before you buy. See you later.